Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Piyush and this is video number 13 in the series CK 2024. In this video, we'll be covering uh, node selectors, labels and selectors, static paths and manual scheduling. I hope you have been following the series till now and you have already watched the previous videos or if you have not watched it, just have a look at the content of what we have covered so far. And if you are already aware of those concepts and you have done enough uh, hands on, so uh, it is okay to skip those videos and move ahead with this else I would highly recommend going through all those videos before and then come back to this. The comment and like target for this video is 130 comments and 130 likes in the next 24 hours. Uh, I'm sure you can do that. In this video as well, we'll be doing the concepts uh, and hands-on demo. And as always, I'll be sharing an assignment for you to do the hands-on by yourself on your home lab. So stay with me till the end of the video. And uh, yeah, let's start with the video. I'm sure you are aware of this diagram. This we have covered in depth in multiple videos. So this is the Kubernetes sample architecture diagram with the control plane on the left and the control plane components and worker nodes, kubelet, kubeproxy and some uh, workloads on the right side running on the worker nodes. Right. So earlier we saw that uh, when we have multiple workloads running in either of the nodes or if we have multiple nodes as well, this component over here, scheduler, this is responsible for deciding which pod has to go on which node. Let's say I have provisioned a new pod, right? So I have my client, client is kubectl, let's say I have sent the request to create a new pod, new nginx pod. So this request will go to API server. Okay, API server creates an entry in the HCD database to create the pod. And then because scheduler is mo monitoring this particular pod or every single pod that is running or that is yet to run on the server, it is continuously monitoring it and it is checking to which particular node out of the available nodes has to schedule these, this particular pod on. And this is based on uh, the scheduling algorithm and various other factors that we'll be discussing later on. But for now, just understand scheduler is responsible for checking and monitoring any pod that is yet to run on the system. And it basically sends that request to the kubelet, like it provides the details to the API server and API server sends the request to the kubelet on that particular node. So if the pod has to be scheduled on this node, the API server with the help of scheduler will send the request to this particular kubelet and instruct the kubelet to run this pod on this particular node and the pod will be provisioned. Then kubelet will send the request back to API server that yes, it has been created and it will update the entry in the HCD database and then it will send the response back to the client. Let's yeah, your pod has been created. Right? So the main component uh, that is involved in this scheduling is scheduler, like multiple components and involved, but who takes the decision and who actually sent the request to kubelet to provision this pod or any pod is scheduler, right? So scheduler does that. Now scheduler as along with API server and other these components is a control plane component. Control plane component, that means it has to be running all the time. Plus it is running as a pod. We have already seen that. So if we go back to our, uh, let's say our cluster, if we do get pods, iPhone namespace is cube system. And if we grab scheduler, okay. So you see this scheduler, cube scheduler, CK cluster three control plane. This is running as a pod. Now scheduler, we just saw like this could be a little confusing, but I'll clear that out. So we have just seen that scheduler itself is responsible for scheduling the pods. But if scheduler itself is a pod, like who's responsible for running it? Like this is one of the chicken egg problems. So the reason for that is there is a concept in Kubernetes and we call it static pods. Now, what are static pods? Static pods are something are most importantly, the control plane components. So these static pods are the control plane components that are not managed by a scheduler. So scheduler is not responsible for scheduling these type of pods. But who does that? Kubelet does that. So we have Kubelet running on this node as well. And Kubelet is responsible for checking that if we have 
any manifest of for these of the pods and if it finds it in a particular directory it will spin up the pod so let me show you how it works so if we go back okay let's see on which node it is running although we know that it should be running a control plane node but let's have a look and uh, let's add hyphen o wide and then we'll add grab scheduler okay and okay so here is the node cka cluster 3 control plane here's the node name and here is the ip of the node so this particular pod is running on this node now if we were using a kubernetes cluster on let's say on any cloud or on vmware or on bare metal servers then this particular node would be a virtual machine and we can directly SSH into that. If it was a Windows machine, we can RDP into that. But as this is a kind cluster that we are using, if you have followed the previous video, we did the setup in a kind cluster. So kind is Kubernetes in Docker. So how it works is it creates multiple containers and treat those containers as the nodes, right? So we have three nodes over here in this cluster. That means we have three containers and those three containers are acting as nodes. Now to enter into a container, we don't SSH into the container, right? We actually do Docker exec with the help of Docker commands. We have seen that. So how do we do? First, we have to uh, exec into container. So let's run the Docker exec command, Docker exec hyphen it and then name of the container. So this is our container name. This is a node name, but node itself is a container. So we'll place that and then hyphen hyphen bash. Okay, it says uh, bash executable not found in the container. Let's try with sh. Okay, maybe we are not using the container name as correct. Maybe the node name is not equal to container name. So let's figure it out. So let's run docker ps because this is the command uh, we use to check all the running containers. And then we do a grab on control plane. Okay, now we see CK cluster three control plane. This is our node. Okay, let me copy this. Uh, this is the name. Okay, and earlier we were using CK cluster three control plane. Uh, this looks the same. Okay, let me let me copy this. Paste it bash okay actually i was i was entering the wrong command so let me show you again so it has to be with hyphen hyphen bash we use this with kubectl exec not with the docker exec so with docker exec we just enter bash at the end now we are inside the control plane node this control plane node i am telling this again this control plane node is nothing but a container so that's why we were able to exec. If you were running this cluster on cloud or somewhere else, it would have been the SSH command that you would have used. Okay, so now we are inside the container. And as I've mentioned, static pods are stored in one single directory and Kubelet just monitor that directory. Right. So if we do ps hyphen ef, we see a kubelet is running on this node. This is a control plane node, but uh, the kubelet is running over here. Okay, and it is monitoring a particular directory. Let's see if we find the directory details from this command itself. So you see it has this bootstrap kubelet config, and then there is a kubelet config. There is this config. And no, I don't see the directory name, but it will be somewhere inside this config, right? But instead of just going through all this, yes, you can uh, have a look at these configs as well. But instead of doing that, we can, we know like the default directory that the manifest are stored in. It's EDC, Kubernetes, manifest. So this is the directory where all the YAMLs of the static pods are stored. So we see we have HCD, Kube API server, Kube controller manager, and Kube scheduler. So there could be a task or there could be like sometimes you have to, let's say, restart the control plane components. So if it is not working, you have to troubleshoot it. Like where exactly is the issue? So you can, you know, go to this directory on the control plane node and you can verify the YAML and you have to make sure that YAML is there inside this particular directory because Kubelet is monitoring this directory. 
And as soon as you remove the YAML from this directory, let's say if you move this to a temp directory, that, that means you have removed it from here. I don't have the cube scheduler YAML. Now, if I, let's say, go to my terminal window, okay, and if I do kubectl get pods hyphen, okay, hyphen namespace is cube system and then grep scheduler you won't see the pod running all the control plane components should be running so let's remove the grep you see we have code dns we have hcd we have kindnet api server controller and cube proxy you have everything else is running but your scheduler is not running because we have removed the manifest now, what will happen if cube scheduler is not running, let's say in the control plane, your control plane won't go down. It's just the task that scheduler is meant to perform. Those tasks would not be performed. So what are those tasks? Scheduling the new pods. Existing pods will keep on running unless they fail. But let's say you start a new pod. Okay. So kubectl run nginx hyphen hyphen image is nginx. Okay. Let's try to schedule a new pod now. Okay, it says it's created. Now if we do k get pods, we see it's stuck in pending state and it will be there in the pending state because scheduler who is responsible for scheduling the pod itself is not running. So if we do a describe on this, describe pod nginx, you won't see any error details. And over here you see node is blank. That means it has not been even scheduled on the node. And you see the status is pending. That means something somewhere is wrong with the scheduler and you have to fix that scheduler. Now, if we have to go back and let's say I'll get the YAML back from the temp directory to this directory. So move slash temp slash uh, the YAML name to the current directory. So dot. Now I have my YAML back over here. So as soon as the YAML gets here, as soon as kubelet finds it out that yes, we have a YAML, it will start the static pod, which is a cube scheduler. So if we go back to terminal and now let's clear the screen and see get pod, the pod is running now. So it just started 71 seconds ago when we started the scheduler. And if we run get pods, uh, cube system grab scheduler, now the scheduler pod is also running just few seconds back. So this is what scheduler does. And this is how we make sure that our pods are getting scheduled and make sure that scheduler is doing what it's supposed to do. But this is not just the only way of scheduling the pods. Okay. So these are, you know, we have already seen these, all the pods over here, these are nothing but the static pods. Okay. All of these are static pods. So if there is an issue where you have to restart these pods or you have to troubleshoot these pods, you know where to find it. You have the YAML, you have all the configuration inside the control plane node and in the ETC Kubernetes manifest directory where all the YAMLs of these static pods are stored. Now, as I mentioned that this is not the only way scheduler schedules its pod. There is a concept of manual scheduling. Like how do scheduler find out to schedule the pod? Okay, so let's say there are two pods that are in pending state. Okay. In one pod, we have mentioned a field called node name. Okay. We have instructed that we have already instructed that schedule the pod on the worker node one. And there is another pod in which this field is not there. Node name is not specified like what we do till now. So this particular pod is the candidate for scheduler. So scheduler scans the pod, scheduler goes and scan all the pods that are in pending state. Okay. So this pod, as well as this pod, it will keep on scanning the pods that are in pending state. And it is looking for a pod, which does not have the selector field, which does not have node name specified. So it has node name. So scheduler will say, okay, this is not my job. It already knows what it has to do. So it will be taken care by themselves. So I will not bother about it, but I will bother about it. A pod 
that does not have this field. So this is the candidate. This is where I have to do my work. This is where I will make sure that this pod is scheduled on a particular node. Uh, scheduler does that. Now let's see how we can do the manual scheduling. So we'll go back. Okay, I'm gonna exit from the node. I'm inside the node. Okay, so for that, let's create one. Uh, I should be inside this directory. So day 13. Okay, so cube run, um, cube CTL run nginx hyphen hyphen image equal to nginx. And because I have to make some changes in the YAML, so let's do hyphen o yaml and then redirect it to a yaml file so pod.yaml so we have seen everything already so i'm not going to discuss it uh, again it says nginx pod already exists so let me delete the pod first delete pod nginx or i could have just taken the yaml from that pod it's one and the same thing so now i'm gonna run the command again and it generated a pod.yaml over here now let's make some changes over here. I don't need, or we can keep these fields. This doesn't matter. So namespace is default resource function. Let's keep these things as well. And I don't need, why did it created so many things? Yeah, ideally it should not create these things, but uh, it's okay. So because we have not covered volume mounts and all those things, so I'm not gonna touch on that for now. So it says it has a default field called scheduler name, default scheduler. But let's remove that for now. Tens tolerations, volume. We are yet to cover everything else. So let's remove everything. Okay. So now we have image and image name. Okay. And it is inside spec. And inside spec at the level of container, we add one more field and we call it node name. And now we specify the node name as, uh, let's see the nodes, uh, get nodes. Okay, uh, worker, let's try to schedule it on worker node one. So we'll keep it over here. Um, now we are instructing the pod to schedule on this particular node. And we are also instructing scheduler to not do anything over here. Okay, so let's save this file. Okay, and let's delete the existing pod as well. Pod. Why are we deleting the pod? Because once the pod is already scheduled on a node, we cannot just move it from one node to another. We have to first delete it and then we have to recreate it to be placed on a particular node. So I will delete this now. And now let's do one more thing. Let's stop the scheduler as well. So a Okay, let me do that in a different terminal so that uh, stay the same. So, okay, let's do a docker exec hyphen it and uh, control plane node was kind pka cluster control plane. I guess kind was not there in the node name. So, let's remove this and uh, docker exec it and then bash okay uh, no container so let's do a docker ps grep control okay the node name was ck cluster 3 control plane ck cluster okay i have to add three over here cluster 3 control plane Okay, now I'm inside the control plane and let's go to EDC, Kubernetes, Manifest. Now I'm gonna move this cube scheduler to a temp directory. Okay, and if we go back and uh, let's say if I do kubectl get pods hyphen n cube system grep scheduler okay my scheduler is now stop it not it's not working so ideally the example that we have seen earlier ideally the pod should stuck in the pending state but over here as we have mentioned the node name so, so even though the scheduler is down it should schedule the pod on this particular node so let's uh look at that 
YouTube CTL apply hyphen F and pod.yaml created get pod. Okay, you see the pod is running even though our scheduler is down. You can check it again. Scheduler is still down, but the pod is scheduled and we have to verify on which node it is running. Get pods hyphen O wide. You see the node is CK3 worker. It's not worker 2, it's not control plane, it's CK cluster 3 worker, which is what we have specified in the node name. So this is how we do the manual scheduling of the pods or any of the Kubernetes object. So we'll go back and let's uh, take the file again from the temp directory and restore it so that our scheduler uh, restarts. And if we run the command again, grab scheduler, this is now running. Uh, it's still coming up. That is why it is zero slash one. But if you wait for a few seconds, it is now one on one. So scheduler is now running. So these two concepts with which we have discussed is static pod and manual scheduling and scheduling as well. Like how, how does scheduler does that? Now let's have a look at labels and selectors. Okay. So uh, let's have a look because we have already seen labels and selectors earlier, but let's have a look at few more things that we have forgot to discuss earlier. So the way labels and selectors work, label basically is attached as part of the metadata and it is helpful in filtering that particular resource. It's not just for deployment, it is for pod, for services, for daemon sets and for many other Kubernetes resources, Kubernetes objects. Like over here, we have specified label environment equal to demo, right? So this label is specific to the deployment. It's not for the pod, it's for the deployment. and over here in the spec section, if we see the label environment equal to demo, this is for the pod and there will be one more label with the selector term. So selector is matching the label of pod with the deployment. So it is saying that match labels for where the environment equal to demo. And now it will check and it will find that environment equal to demo is for this particular pod and it will manage that pod as part of this deployment. Right? So this is how we use labels and selectors. So let's say, and there could be many other uh, ways we can label the resources. For example, let's say we have get pods. Okay, so we have one pod running. Okay, for this pod, uh, we had the label run nginx. We can add more label like type is, let's say, front end. Or let's say we can add instead of type, we can add it tier as front end and we can add one more label with type as app one. Okay. Or something else, you know, you can add multiple labels. So if we make the save to it and let's apply the change, k apply hyphen f or dot yaml. Okay. It says conflict, maybe because we are trying to patch the existing resource. Let's use hyphen hyphen force with it. Okay, now it's configured is because we have used the node name. So it is throwing some issues with the, the patching it. So now see if we do k get pods, it is running. And if we add k get pods hyphen hyphen uh, show labels, uh, we see the additional labels have already added to it and let's make a copy of it. Okay, let's create one new file. Um, I'm just going to copy this YAML and let's create one more file is pod2.yaml. Okay, I have pasted it over here and we'll make certain changes like uh, let it be managed by scheduler. So I'll just remove the node name. Okay. Um, pod name will be nginx new or let's use a redis pod so let's call it redis and redis over here instead of front end let's use back end and let's remove this one okay and image is also redis redis container okay Let's save this and let's apply these changes. Apply hyphen F, um, 
pod two dot yaml. Okay, applied. Okay, get pods. We have both the pods running. Now, when we have to filter it based on their labels. So currently, we only have two pods, but let's say we have hundreds of pods, and we need to get only the pods that are for front end. So what we can do is k get pods the same command, and in that we can add one more field which is selector. So selector and the label name was let's say tier equal to front end. When we do that, the reply that we get is just the nginx pod. So it will match the selector with the label on the pod. And the same way, if we do tier as backend, it will return the backend pod. So you see, it is helpful for uh, labeling the resources in like an identical group. And then with the help of selector, we can retrieve those resources. We can make certain changes to it. We can maybe uh, create a report out of it and there'll be multiple use cases. Okay, let's open this uh, YAML again, cube CTL edit or any one of those. Let's open nginx one. Okay. And if you see over here, we have an additional field inside metadata, which is annotation. So annotation is not labels. It is similar to that, but what it will store, it will store additional details, additional information messages, information related to the object itself. Let's say it will add one more annotation as last applied configuration. Okay, the changes that were made to it and its details that were there previously so that it will be easier for the controller to know how to roll back it and how to make the changes and uh, creation timestamp and so on. So this annotation is different than labels. It is to store the information related to the metadata of the object and the resource. And there is a difference between labels and namespaces. So if you see namespaces, let me go back over here. So when we looked at the namespaces, uh, we discussed that namespaces is the logical separation of the resources in a group. Like for test, we have a separate namespace. For prod, we have a separate namespace. There is one for default. There is one for cube system. There is one for cube public, cube node lease, cube storage, and so on, right? In that, the resources are logically separated so that we cannot accidentally modify or make any changes or delete the, the resource accidentally from any other namespace and basically to secure it and for another additional purpose. But with labels, we are just applying that tag, like the way we use tag on any resources. So we are applying that tag, that label to the resource so that it will be easier for us to filter those resources or to group those resources. Like if you go to any other shopping website, amazon.com, let's say, you know, there is a filter on the left side or wherever it is, it doesn't matter, but there will be a filter through which you can filter the resources based on your needs, based on the cost based on the rating, based on the customer feedback and so on. So those filters are nothing but the selectors. And similarly, every product on amazon.com has multiple labels attached to it. So these labels are, let's say the customer rating, the feedback, the product description, uh, the product title, the category, and many more. So with the help of uh, those filters, we can do the selection and we can get the results based on our requirement. So labels and selectors does the same thing. All right. So that's it for this video. I hope uh, you found this valuable as always, and you should be able to complete the comments and like target. Uh, please try to do that in the next 24 hours so that I can publish the next video after that. And uh, yeah, if you face any issues because there will be an assignment. Uh, in the day 13 folder, try to complete that. If you face any issue with that or with the video itself, you know where to reach out. We have a Discord channel as well as you can reach out in the comment section below. So try to help others as well in the Discord channel who are facing the similar issue or if you know the answer of the issue that they are facing, please try to help them. And uh, that's it. And I hope you are having a good learning experience so far. If yes, please feel free to share this uh, video and the playlist with your friends, family, colleagues, whoever you think could take advantage of this learning opportunity. Please do that. And I will see you tomorrow with the next video considering the target is completed, but the videos have already been recorded as I have mentioned. 
so i will publish that and thank you so much for watching and have a good day and have a good learning